it's lovely to um, be invited by our dear pastor to share with you today. So thank you to Pastor Colin for inviting me to speak. I would like to open now in prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. I praise you for who you made me to be and where you have placed me and the people you have surrounded me with, my brothers and sisters in Christ, here in your Boundary Street Church. I pray that the words I say will be from your Holy Spirit and that they will be a blessing to many here. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Excuse me, I just get my notes together. Good morning, friends. Good morning, <laughs> um, Can we start, please, by uh, just turning to Ephesians 6 from, chapter, from verse 10 to 12, please? Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Thank you. I would like to share with you all a little bit about my history in the occult and how I came to the Lord Jesus Christ. As a little girl, I always had a love for God. I had my own Bible, which I had asked my mum and dad for one Christmas. From time to time, I would go alone to church and take it with me. Around the age of six to seven, I started to have really vivid dreams about my great-grandma, who had died a few years earlier. It was around this time that she started to appear to me. I would even see her when I was outside playing, and one <coughs> time I saw her in the back of a passing car, smiling and waving to me. I would sense presences from then on, and see other figures that I did not recognise. My sister saw a few of these too. This continued throughout, or throughout my life. But pressing on, just before I was due to be married and living in Clayton, a Jehovah's Witness knocked on my door, and I had a Bible study for a few months before my wedding. I then moved to RAF Married Quarters in Devon with my husband, and then on to Bryce Norton, where two Jehovah's Witnesses knocked on my door yet again. We had a Bible study with them for around 18 months, uh, we went to their conventions and to the Kingdom Hall weekly as a family, although we did have some misgivings about their teachings. My father became very ill, and Ian had already decided to leave the Air Force, so we returned home to stay with my parents. After my father died, we moved to Penkel. My husband went away for training with British Aerospace so he could work with aircraft in Saudi Arabia. Everything was fine in the house until he left for Saudi, leaving us behind until we got allocated a villa. It was then that I started to sense spirits in the house, but this time it was different. It, was, it felt very dark and evil. It got so bad that my, ba my bed would suddenly start shaking every night. Ornaments would move. My cat would arch his back, hiss and hide away. Doors would open and shut, and it was so very icy cold. I prayed as a Jehovah's Witness would pray, and it didn't stop, but grew worse. My children were experiencing things too, so I turned to a medium for help. She knew all about my bed shaking as soon as I sat down, and she persuaded me to go to, back, uh, to, go to a spiritualist church. They called themselves Christian spiritualists which made me feel a little bit safer. I was told that the haunting would stop once I saw my dad who would come to take them away. 
And indeed, when I saw him, it did calm down, although not entirely. A year later, we were allocated a villa in Saudi, so we happily moved away from Penkel. Pressing on, we came back to the UK in 2004, living first in Burslem and then in Silverdale, where my husband and I sadly separated. I moved to Chesterton. I was taken aback when my mother rang and told me that she was having experiences in her flat, which totally floored me, as my parents never believed me and would tell me that I was dreaming and imagining these things. This happened just three weeks before my brother suddenly died. My mother and sisters went to visit mediums and they persuaded me to go back to the spiritualist church. I didn't want to go, but I was worried about my family and so I went with them each and every week. One week, I heard a voice in my head saying, what are you doing here? I turned around expecting to see someone talking to me but nobody took any notice. And I heard the voice again, what are you doing here? I started to doubt and dislike being there. I wanted to leave and I became entirely depressed and suffered panic attacks. I finished work and went on to benefits. I was given a food bank voucher for Silverdale Eland Church, where I met a lovely lady who we saw last night called Doreen Evans who asked us if, she, if we went to church, and I told her where we went. She told us that we were on the wrong path and quoted scriptures to us. She asked if she could pray for us, and she held our hands and prayed. I was very upset, and my mum was too. Those doubts I had about the spiritualist grew stronger. I started to suffer terribly from agoraphobia and couldn't leave my home. My anxiety and panic attacks went through the roof. I kept thinking about God and I prayed that he would show me the truth. I turned to the internet and I found Doug Harris, a presenter for Revelation TV. I watched him interview a lady called Laura Maxwell, who was an ex-spiritualist who found Jesus. As she was giving her testimony, she said to read Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 12. Could we turn to that now, please? Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 12. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or cats spells or is a medium or spiritist who or who consults the dead anyone who does these things is detestable to the lord because of these same detestable practices the lord your god will drive out those nations before you <clears throat> in uh, i think it's the new king james version Instead of saying detestable, I think it's an abomination. I looked that up in the Oxford Dictionary, and it means a loathsome or disgusting person. When I realised that I was an abomination to God, I fell down on my knees. I cried, and I asked for guidance. I'm sorry. I watched everything I could find on that Doug Harris YouTube channel. And I learned all about the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, the Occult, the Bible. And one day, as I was reading Psalm 91, the Holy Spirit opened up my eyes. It was like a light going on. I finally understood. I fell to my knees and I sobbed and I sobbed. I repented of everything that I could think of at that time and asked the Lord Jesus to remind me of anything I may have forgotten. My eyes were drawn to all the occult paraphernalia around my home, and for the next few hours, I collected it all together and destroyed it. I didn't stop there. I scraped all my worldly DVDs and my music, and I filled up the wheelie bin. I repented of it all and asked for forgiveness, and I felt 
enveloped in love like I'd never felt before. And I was so hungry, I was so hungry to know the Lord Jesus more. I searched the internet for a church and found Assemblies of God in Boundary Street. I rang and Pastor Colin answered and I asked him for the service times. He then told me that I was fortunate to catch him in the church as he was getting the baptism pool ready for a baptism on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. I was so excited that I would watch somebody getting baptised. I had several panic, panic attacks those days prior to coming here. I prayed silently as I caught the bus and I smoked three cigarettes on the way up from the bus station. <laughs> I went straight into the ladies as soon as I got here. I think Chris directed me, oh, Phil, Phil directed me to the ladies. And I went in there to compose myself become, before coming in and sitting at the back of the church. Then Linda came and spoke to me introduced, and she introduced me to Anne and Peter and I sat with them. I revealed to Anne how much I wanted to be baptised, so when Pastor asked if anyone wanted to be baptised to come forward, I felt glued to my seat until Anne brought me up to the front. Linda took me into the prayer room where I told her as much as I could in those few minutes. I got baptised that day, the 21st of April 2013. <laughs> Praise God. And I prayed and I learned that the spirits I had seen were called familiar spirits in the Bible and were in fact demons. They impersonate our dead loved ones. If we can turn to 2 Corinthians 11:14, please. And it says that, and, and no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then, if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, their end will be what their actions deserve. Amen. They have been hanging around for thousands of years. Uh, they have vast psychic knowledge of our families and historical figures down the generations, like shapeshifters in movies, easily disguising themselves. They can pose as our deceased loved ones, pretend to be spirit guides, aliens, etc., and mimic famous oh, and mimic famous celebrities. It made sense when Christians said it was impossible for the dead souls to return to talk to us as they remain in heaven or hell for eternity. So spirits working via spiritualism, ghost hunting, etc., are evil demons appearing as the dead. Spirit guides, um, spirit guides goddesses, aliens, even fairies. First, uh, 1 John 4, verses 1 to 3, please. 1 John. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world this is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the Spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. Thank you, Lord. My friend, um, Laura Maxwell, writes, I've known many who challenge guides and other spirit entities in Jesus Christ for their true identity. Screaming, they show their true evil form. When a spiritualist, I saw Jesus as a cosmic force, part of the universal consciousness 
or as a healing medium. Since my conversion in 1994, she writes that she met um, many psychics, ex-psychics, ex-mediums, ghost hunters, pagans, witches, and they all discovered their spirit guides and dead relatives were not who they claimed to be. These people have since been set free after inviting Christ into their lives. Hallelujah. Looking back, I can see that the enemy used spiritualism and the Jehovah's Witnesses to keep me away from God. I had an auntie who lived in Doncaster who was a spiritualist medium, and she held seances at her home. She used to tell me things about the spirits whenever she saw me. I also had another auntie who read tea leaves. The enemy uses people like these in our family. The enemy will use the media and Hollywood, etc., to desensitize us such as Harry Potter books and movies, ex-witches have said that many youngsters were applying to join their covens after watching that. Horoscopes, tarot cards are form of forms of divination and need to be avoided. We all need to be aware and to seek Jesus in all things, to pray for God's wisdom and discernment. I had a further attack after I prayed for deliverance for someone. As I slept on the sofa that night, I suddenly felt hands come through the back of the sofa and hold me tight around my waist. It felt so revolting. For about a minute, my throat closed up and I couldn't scream. I prayed silently and felt its grip loosen, and I found the strength to sit up and called out to Jesus. In that split second, it left. Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus. Jesus has healed me from agoraphobia, from anxiety. He has given me confidence and strength. And he's answered so many of my prayers and he's set me free. I'd just like to say a little bit about the new age. Practices such as yoga, meditation, channeling energy, tai chi, kung fu, karate, acupuncture, mantras, mandalas, feng shui, etc. are all based on spiritual teachings or principles that incorporate the gods and goddesses or the channeling of energy. All gods and goddesses are false gods, also known as demons. There is only one god, and he is the one who created the heavens and the earth. Any other God is like Satan, looking to become like God in order to gain power and control over humanity. Channeling energy is an age-old occult practice. Demons use energy as one of the ways they can move from place to place. They use this energy movement to transfer from person to person, person to object. It is, an, it is a form of witchcraft and it is not a practice that brings a person into alignment with the Spirit of God. Meditation, other than meditating on the Lord's Word, is a form of moving energy. As you are trying to move your energy into a certain direction, a thought pattern or a process in order to gain something, that is witchcraft. Doing these Eastern spiritual practices is aligning yourself with the kingdom of darkness. It is practicing inviting demo uh, the demonic into your lives, into your homes and into your spiritual being. Once you bring these practices into your life, it can cause great harm in your physical being. So as well as your spiritual being, you are inviting these demonic entities into your homes and into your family. Yoga in particular is very dangerous because of the momentum it has gained throughout the world at the moment. It has gained um, even in the Christian church. As this lady grew in her relationship with Jesus Christ, she understood that yoga and other alternative healing therapies were inviting demons in. The Holy Spirit revealed to her how yoga was used in satanic rituals. Each specific yoga, or a pose, or a stretch, you are lining up your alignment of your spirit and soul with different deities. It is channeling the Kundalini spirit throughout your spine. If 
you have participated in yoga of any sort or other new age healing therapies using crystals, symbols, spirit guides, channeling, etc., I urge you to take time away from this practice and devote yourself to prayer and asking God to reveal his truth to you. We must bring everything before the Lord Jesus Christ. It is his wisdom that we need to seek in a world full of darkness and lies. God does not hate anyone who has done these practices. He loves every one of us and he wants us to have freedom from our bondage. Remember the devil wants to steal that from us by convincing us his dark, art, his dark arts are healthy and good. We need only to look to the author and perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ. He is our hope, our peace. Your Father in heaven loves you much more than you can imagine. I would like to close now with this scripture, please, uh, from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 to 11. I'm 12. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord there are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given, through the Spirit, a message of, of, of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge. By means of the same Spirit. To another, faith. By the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. Amen. So we see that the only spirit is the Holy Spirit that gives these gifts to, you know, to us. It was like Jesus rolled off his sleeve, plunged down into the earth, plucked me out of the darkness and placed me into his glorious light. Hallelujah. The song we sometimes sing, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. That line, how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.